What's up guys? So on this channel, I spend a lot of time working on the Piaf Passage and part of what what got me to that point of being kind of an expert in hand and working on that is because I really liked the Piaf Passage. And so that's kind of when I talk about the triangle, that collection is being at the top of the triangle and like I really got excited when I saw horses capable of doing amazing Piaf Passage and I'll also throw in their pirouettes. Um, and that's kind of at the Grand Prix level, that ultimate goal of training a horse to be able to come on the hind legs and really carry themselves. And for me, like that was so inspiring seeing the horses like Vallegro or Totalus, the horses that are at that next level able to do those most difficult movements with ease. And today I want to talk a little bit about young horses and watching young horses move and how sometimes it can be deceiving. Now, when you're picking out a young horse, I encourage people not to select the horses that always move with these giant gates. So we go try young horses and we see a horse that has a massive trot, right? Floaty, lofty trot. And when I'm picking horses out, sometimes these horses actually don't develop well down the road for that Piaf Passage and for the canter pirouettes coming on the hind leg. So let's draw a little chart to try to explain what's happening here. Okay, so down here we have age of the horse. Okay, so over here we'll have performance, whether it's a low performing horse or a high performing horse, meaning if, if at age, if at, as a yearling, if it's a low performing horse, it's gonna be down here. If it's a yearling and it's winning all the competitions, it's gonna be up here. So let's chart two different types of horses. One that's high performing as a young horse and one that's low performing as a young horse. And what you'll find is this actually influences a lot of the breeders. So what's happening is high performing young horses are doing so well just really soon and then we're actually breeding more of these types of horses these big lofty moving big trotting moving young horses and sometimes these horses aren't actually the ones that perform well when we get to grand prix when we get to the ultimate goal of dressage okay so i charted two horses on here and this is just kind of an example of this. So if we have a high performing young horse, right? Something that goes out and the canner's massive and the trot is massive and the legs are flying. Sometimes these horses, as they get older, don't have the strength in the top line to be able to support the Grand Prix. And so when they're trotting big as young horses, not all the times, but sometimes, they really struggle as they get to the Grand Prix. In, in other instances, what happens is we have a horse that trots very normal here. And I'm going to show you exa an example of that, which is actually my horse, very big horse, but he trots very normal right now. He's, he's a four-year-old now. And my hope is, my hope, <laughs> is that down the road, this horse will be, excel at the collected component of dressage. So coming on the hind leg, doing the piaf passage, doing the canter pirouettes, that's where he's going to excel. It's not going to be these big lofty gates. So again, take a look at this. The high performing young horse, as you get up toward the Grand Prix, so this crossover may happen maybe at the Pre-St. George, that as they cross over into the Pre-St. George where you introduce the canter pirouettes, or even as you go toward the Grand Prix, you start having the Piaf Passage that they really struggle and maybe they don't even make it to Grand Prix. And there's these other types of horses that trot very normal, lose in the young horse classes, you know, aren't very flashy. Everybody says, oh, that's kind of a normal looking horse. And that actually these horses, when you introduce the Piaf Passage, that's where they excel. So what's the difference here? The difference between this crossover in, in some ways, if this is pre-St. George and here we have the Grand Prix, let me show you the difference. The Piaf Passage in the Grand Prix test represents 36.3% of the score. That's insane. So a horse that has these lofty gates 
and doesn't have the top line to support it, doesn't have the, the strength and the power, that kind of old school power in some ways, to be able to support this kind of movement, they fall off here. Where these horses that, that have the strength and the power to support the big movements, the Piaf Passage, and I'll throw the canter pirouettes in there too. That's 36% of the tests that you don't have at pre-St. George. So you see a big change there in the horses that can excel at pre-St. George, and then that jump to the Grand Prix is massive. There's such a big difference there. To, to compete at the Grand Prix, it's, a, it's another level. So anyway, I just wanted to chart that out in some ways for myself to see we breed a lot of these horses because the feedback loop is faster. So as a breeder, I'm saying, oh man, I wanna, I wanna have a high performing horse as a young horse, and then I can sell it and make money. So the breeders sometimes get into trouble. Some breeders, some breeders are really good at breeding Grand Prix horses, but some breeders struggle with this and they fall into this trap of breeding high performing young horses that don't necessarily have the skills to do the Grand Prix. All right, so I have a little bit of footage of my horse, and he is a first and ball diamond hit. And he's a really big horse, and he's four years old now, and Dawn is riding him, Dawn's my girlfriend. She's riding him while my foot is broken. Um, and so I'm gonna put together a little video now to show um, his gates and just watch it and, and observe how the gates function because he's not a flashy horse right now. Um, but I think there's good quality in the gates and the gates are very correct. And my hope is that down the road, he'll be one of those horses that um, is able to come on the hind leg and, and show you that beautiful Piaf Passage um, and Kenner Pirouettes. Hopefully this was helpful and if you have any thoughts or any different pieces to add, please comment below, uh, like the video, and if you want, subscribe to the channel. I'm always trying to think of things and, and put content out there about dressage, um, mostly just because I love it. So thanks for watching. Yeah.